In this edition of World Insight, we have a special panel discussion from the Global Mayor's Dialogue in Hangzhou. Beyond the, he- Beyond the Headlines, this is World Insight. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, every city is unique and has its own strength. And as a result, the cities need to be developed with different characteristics and personalities. But cities all over the world, like being present here today on the stage, also share similar aspirations. They want to play a role, a critical role, for sustainable development for their own peoples and through the urban governance. That's why we are gathering all of them here together to have a chat, hopefully, with some exchange of ideas, we can have the best practices and inspirations for one another. My great honor to introduce, coming from Italy, Ms. Laura Fincato, former Deputy Foreign Minister of Italy and Mayor's Representative of Venice, Italy. Thank you. Mr. Yao Gaoyuan, Mayor of Hangzhou, China. Thank you. Mr. Nectario, Pharmacists, Governor of Western Greece, from Greece. Thank you so much, sir. Coming from the great country of South Africa, the African continent, Mr. Langelo Mubenzayo, the city manager of Cape Town. Coming from Malaysia, welcome our neighbors in Asia, Mr. Sabine Bin Samita, Mayor of Kota Kinabalu, Mr. Amiak Honi, Deputy Mayor of Dushanbe, Tajikistan. Thank you. We have all these mayors and the governors coming from China, the rest of Asia, Africa, Europe. Wow, what a conversation we are going to have. I would love to have every one of you to use one word or two to describe your city, or in your case, your region. Let's start from the host. The great poet from North Song Dynasty, who's the mayor of Hangzhou, used a poem to describe Westlake. Be it light or heavy makeup, it's always well suited with the city. So we like to use the very word well suited, suited to describe Hangzhou. First of all, Hangzhou is well suited for living. 8,000 years ago, the Cross Lake Bridge was there. 5,000 years ago, the Liangchu, Asian sites and people actually settled here to build a city. So Hangzhou has a history of 8,000 years of human activities and 5,000 years of human civilization. Nowadays, as a mega city, we have 12.52 million people living here happily. So it has been awarded by saying that Hangzhou is paradise on earth, the most happy city for China. And Hangzhou is well suited for businesses as well. And we have over two million market business entities, meaning that every six people have a enterprise owner in Hangzhou and has more than 300 listed companies. In Binjong district, on average, every square meter, actually we have one listed company. Recent years, we have attracted an average of 350,000 young people under the age of 35 in Hangzhou each year to settle their businesses. For example, people are know it very well. A global hit of China's 3A game, Black Myth Wukong, actually was rightly both in Hangzhou. The production team is a group of young people from other cities six years ago to start a business in Hangzhou. They came to Hangzhou and the reason is very simple. The Hangzhou is the very place that is well suited for doing business and to live here. So they believe that Hangzhou is the right place. So six years have passed by. They are now making great success. The inspirational story of Black Myth Wukong tells us that so long as you work really hard, Everyone can achieve their dreams. Thank you very much, Mayor Yao. Governor, coming from Greece, please. The branding of our region, the region, the name of the region is Western Greece. Western Greece means nothing. However, the branding of our region is one and simple and global. Olympian land, the land where the Olympic Games began, 
the land where, where the Olympic flame burns every four years and the land that represents human values that are eternal. That is the land I come from, that is the region of Western Greece, that is the land we're proud of. Land full of proud people, working people, people that are uh, eager to see a brighter future. That's what we're working for. And of course, a land full of contrasts. It's like yin and yang, to speak in the Chinese philosophy. It's like yin and yang, full of contrasts. Mountains, lakes, rivers, coasts, all of these um, ingredients that make a land competitive and full of uh, occasions of investment of f bright future. Mm. Have you noticed, I think the competition among mayors are already beginning. <laughs> Let's go to uh, mayor of uh, uh, Cape Town, city manager of Cape Town from South Africa, uh, Mr. Muban Dazayo. Thank you again for the invitation. I can describe the city or we describe the city as a city of hope where people can realize their dreams, where they can prosper, where there's diverse culture and it, where they are united in diversity. We have a beautiful city that each and every person in the world aspires to visit and especially our Temple Mountain. And everyone is welcome to visit the city of Cape Town. And now let's go to Laura, coming from the city of Venice, please. And we have a, a, a great man in common, Marco Polo, who is the Hanzo, described Hanzo. So this year, uh, as uh, you know, we celebrate uh, the 700 uh, year um, passing uh, away. But in any case, I want to speak uh, about uh, Venice uh, today. Because Venice um, celebrate its uh, uh, 1600th anniversary two years uh, ago. So um, a long story, a long birth, because every day uh, Venice has to be rebirthed. It's a history of man, history of lagoon, history of island, history of bridge. And for that, it's now our duty to transform the historic city in a modern city. And I think I could use two words to, to say my idea. Water and art. Thank you. Let's go to Malaysia, the beautiful city that you are representing, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, located in uh, the Malaysian state of Sabah, uh, Kota Kinabalu is a coastal city known for its uh, breathtaking uh, natural beauty, um, rich cultural heritage, and warm hospitality. And uh, Kota Kinabalu, often referred to as uh, KK, uh, serves as a gateway to the stunning landscape of uh, Borneo and offering a mix of rainforests, pristine beaches, and crystal clear waters for visitors to explore. And the city is home to the Mount Kinabalu, Southeast Asia's uh, highest peak, a uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site that attracts uh, climbers and nature enthusiasts from around the world. And, and in addition to its uh, natural wonders, Kota Kinabalu is a melting pot of diverse cultures with influences from indigenous tribes, uh, Malay, Chinese, and other ethnic communities uh, shaping its vibrant identity. A city of contrast and diversity, thank you. Last but not least, city of Bushan Bay. Uh, this should be one of the young, modern, and at the same time very developed city. The city of the contrast, the city of colors, the city of huge and wide gardens and parks, and city of fountains. Of course, of course, on the same time, with the modern infrastructure, with the providing the uh, all main. Uh, Necessary, necessary 
infrastructure services for increasing the level of the life of residential in entire municipality, municipality area. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now let's move on to the real topic today, the urban governance and sustainable development. So about you, Mr. Mayor, coming from Hangzhou, so as a mayor, as a governor of the city, I believe that mayors who are sitting here, we actually do have a common challenge, that is the digest transportation digestion. Um, and especially in Hangzhou, um, the transportation congestion. We have so many cars running on the road, and we do have a lot of ownership of the cars running on the road. So it's a big problem for to solve for the congestion problem. So how do we solve these congestion problems? Actually, we do have two, either to increase something or to reduce something. If we're talking about reduction, Maybe we can put um, restrictions, limitations on the car, plates. If we wanted to increase something, it means that we need to increase the investment by building new roads, etc. But I don't think we really yield good results out of those two measures. As the digital city in China, we do think about a way to empower the transportation governance. So starting from 2022, we have been working really hard on the digital empowerment on transportation. So we leverage the strength of our city urban brains, that is the IoT devices, interconnectivity, the big data, AI, cloud computing, large language models. All of those have been leveraged to manage and govern our transportation. While you are talking, I noticed that the vice mayor of Dushanbe had been listening very clearly to your numbers. Now, Mr. Vice Mayor, uh, what's going on in Hangzhou? Can that be of reference to what's going on in your city? Mm. In general, as His Excellency uh, mentioned, the problems in all urban area, areas is very similar to each other. The all above mentioned problems accordingly to public transportation about the general transport management is also existing in our city. But uh, right now, the main problem which we are facing, the main challenge is the correctly location, correctly deployment of the charger, uh. charger devices for avoiding some overloading on the existing, on the existing networks. That's a beautiful question. To you, Mr. Governor. Uh, the European Union as a whole, and specifically the region of Western Greece, targeted special funds, European funds, through the Smart Specialization Strategy, RIS3, it is called in the European Union, which is for the current pro program has six areas of specialization, funds specifically targeted for six categories of uh, infrastructure or strategy. Materials, construction, agri-food, environment, circular economy, sustainable energy, and digital technologies. Six actions, six strategies that European funding is going for public investment, private investment, mixed investment. And of course, it is not uh, irrelevant to say that Western Greece, our region, and have every every reason to boast about it, uh, has been awarded by the European Union as a regional innovation valley. Earlier you said sustainable development. Also, I want to start from the city of Venice. In this case, I get to say the government made a good job because gave us the money to realize a system that is named MOSE, a system of barrier to the mouth of the lagoon and the port, separating the lagoon from the Adriatic Sea. And in various occasions, we had this system working well to protect the city against the flooding. So, this is a first step, step what was made to defend Venice. 
we have to uh, elevate the bank, we have to uh, have a care of the mm, river who arrive in, into the lagoon, um, the pollution as well, and the congestion in the canal is awful. The, the motor is awful, the breeze is awful, the pollution is awful for the water, for the air, and come see, we are 50,000 people living in this uh, island. In the center, there are more, more in the other island, but mm. in the center, 50,000 people and 30 million tourists. How are you going to deal with it? How are you dealing with it right now? The solution is a government about entry uh, in, in Venice, going around the little street we call Calle, and uh, Ticketing for uh, theater, ticketing for uh, uh, <clears throat> Biennale, for example, to have a, a control room about people entering, living, because it's a balance. It's a balance of life. Citizen and tourist. We want, we want a tourist. We want to send you a <laughs> a little bit of tourist, as you asked <laughs> last night. <laughs> to the city of Hangzhou? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Well, yesterday, Ms. Mayor said that her biggest headache is too many tourists. That's why today she talked about pollution, congestion, and she mentioned that last year alone, more than 30 million tourists, and asked me, how to address it, and I told her in Hangzhou last year, tourists 120 million. So I told her, if too many tourists for you, ask you tourists to visit Hangzhou. Of course, that is a wonderful and beautiful joke, uh, also friendship. But are, are you going to send them through the gondola? We, we, we sent already, we sent a, a gondola to Hangzhou in 2013. Uh, yeah, I visited uh, yesterday. Right. We have another mayor coming from a tourist city called uh, uh, Kota Kinabubu, coming from Malaysia. How are you dealing with that climate change, sustainable development in your city? Having technology innovation is very good, but it boils down to good leadership, actually. Because with the good leadership, I'm sure you can hire the right people to administer the city because you need not only highly intelligent people uh, to do the uh, technical parts, you see, because uh, you can't afford a halfback um, technical people to design or to come up with a good design for a city. Yeah. But at the same time, beside uh, the capability in terms of uh, tech technology and technical, you need them to be human also. So you have to blend it actually. So again, technology, good leadership is very important, addressing like a traffic problem mm. and so on. Uh, whether it's about nature, it is also about people. South Africa, Cape Town. Climate change to us is a reality in Cape Town. I think you'll remember we had a situation in 2018, 2019, where we were talking about day zero. We felt climate change then, where we had to do our best to save ourselves from running out of water. And since then, we learned to be climate resilient, energy efficient, in all our programming, we have to make sure that we take into account all the issues that can affect climate change because of the situation in which we are facing. During winter, we know it's a rainy season in, this, in Cape Town. We are happy this year we got rain. We don't know whether I'll get it, but once we get rain this season, we know that it will take us through summer and the next winter if it doesn't rain. So we are facing that. In summer, we are facing fires every summer. 
So we are feeling the climate change. It is for that reason that the city of Cape Town is part of the 40 of the more than 100 global cities in C40 climate. We are part of that. It is exactly that. And we also, as a city, we have cities climate change policy and implementation plans because it is always in our radar, in all our strategies and planning, we factor that in because we are already experiencing it in Cape Town as a city. Let's go to Dushanbe. As I mentioned, the level of the last some seasons, we are meeting the dry seasons. In the country where they are producing 98% of the electricity in hydropower plants, it's the big challenge. We have somehow to deal with this existing challenge and difficulties. And, but it's not only related to energy for electricity, it's related to many sectors of our real economy, including irrigation, energy, nature, nature preservation, and other sectors. In energy sector, the most optimal solution was founded of the, on the diversification of the source of generation of electricity. And around maybe two or three years ago has been signed the action plan for future development of the energy sector, which aims the bringing to our energy basket more than 700 megawatts from renewables, mostly from solar. This is only one of the countermeasures of the reaction on climate negative impact, change negative impact. But on the, we have the same problems on irrigation sector. We, for the last some seasons, the, we, have, we had a lot of the cases of the floods. And for the interconnection and for the uh, mitigation of those disasters, we are already starting preparing from the early, early spring. This is we are cleaning and the cleaning the bank of the rivers, strengthening the bank of the rivers, cleaning the diversion of the uh, spillways, intakes, canals, and etc. We are doing our best to be resilient, to be resilient of the negative to the negative impact of climate change. Hopefully, that will work. What about from the governor of uh, Western Greece? Uh, in the region of Western Greece, we have started years ago by decreasing our consumption of regular energy, CO2 emissions, etc. And of course, uh, we have started the program of producing our own energy through solar and uh, um, wind uh, pr producing. Uh, I have to state here, and I quote, uh, in the region of Western Greece, it is established that 20% um, of the national production of solar energy and the 25% of the uh, hydro yeah. energy. So we are uh, in the process of this green transition. However, we have a tendency as humans not to programming wisely. So we all went from zero to 100. And now we're not capable to, to, to stock the amount of energy, energy we need to, to make the transition to. And we're talking about batteries, and we're talking about new investments in new uh, ways of... I told you before, technology is here. We have the technology. The, th the thing is that we're losing time, and time is very precious. And I think the, the, the way to do this is to, to open a market of energy that we can buy from each other, that we can uh, elevate, uh, um, make an, um, a balance of the, prog of the problem so as to have the energy we need and, of course, in the price we need. Uh, finally, I want to thank all of you for joining us today and share with us your insights and also your ideas. Have this beautiful exchange of uh, uh, opinions on the stage and hopefully off the stage as well. All the best wishes to all your wonderful cities. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Zoom in on global affairs with insightful debates and exclusive interviews. This is World Insight.